Welcome to this week's episode of the Composition of Imagination. I am your host and author, Stevie Joe. This is the show where we explore my writing in the world of Angel of Death, kind of the characters and plot and everything about it. <laughs> Me today, I have two of my book guardians, Superman and Moosey. <laughs> and I just want to welcome you back again. Thank you for returning for this episode to talk about Skylar for book four. We rounded out a discussion about Skylar Jericho from the perspective of Veiled Commandments and the two books that led up to it because, you know, now we're evolving in her history and stuff. So um, Veiled Commandments is book three in the series. I'm going to wrap up Skylar's segment, uh, temporarily wrap up, Skylar's segment of Murmurs of Murr County with the fourth book, The Good Shepherd. Um, of course, when I say that we're wrapping it up, that's what I mean. We're just finishing with her character for now. As book five and six and on come out, we will come back and return to her character development and see how things have changed. So trust me, we will get back to Skylar again. So right away just really diving into book four i have one big question where the hell is skylar because the very first time we see her is in chapter 13 of this book if this is supposed to be our primary protagonist our leading lady the main character of the whole angel of death series why would i write 12 full chapters before having her appear and those 12 chapters talk an awful lot about lichens and don't even really mention her at all so why did i do you think i made that decision well part of it it feels like you were doing that to show the 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 forces coming together yeah. outside okay. of what's going on with skylar herself and how dangerous it's becoming okay that's a valid valid i was gonna say just <clears throat> spending more time maybe world building with the other realm yeah so you're talking a lot about them as well so yeah both very good reasons for delaying the introduction of our main character another reason why i did it was because when these books are written I take the perspective that you've already read what's to come, so I can just pick right up where I need to and not have to introduce anybody, really. So to me, Chapter 13 wasn't an introduction of her as much as it was a, okay, now we can finally go visit her because everything else has... Well, so it that... does lend to your... It lends to both the world building and the let's see what's going on around her so that when you see what she's doing, you know why. True, and you, and the way you ended the last book, that was kind of hard to process. Yeah, so, so you I needed, had to pick up with that instead. Yeah, you had to sit there and allow yourself a little, yes. a few chapters to sit there and process. Okay, what? Wait, why did you do that? Yes, yes. So now here's the funny thing about when we do see Skylar in chapter thirteen. It's actually not her from her perspective. We're seeing Skylar from someone else's perspective. Isn't that an odd way for an author to introduce the main character to the reader? It can be. Did you pick uh, 13 on purpose? No, actually, I literally, as I was working through this for this video, I realized that was not, that was an accident, a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, we're seeing Skylar through someone else's eyes, and those eyes are Bane. So what he's referring to, if you have not read book three yet, <laughs> I'll give you a quick, very quick summary over what you missed that we didn't talk about because Skylar was not in it. Um, we were introduced to Hell, the Kingdom of Hell, in book three. Um, hell is um, got three, we met three of the Dark Angels, that live down there who are basically the antitheses of the guardians in heaven 
the ones we met are Sierra, Evie Lynn, and Bane. Evie and Bane are lovers. Sierra is an ex-lover of Bane's. Bane has been commissioned by the Pied Piper, Samuel, to break Hope's bond with her mortal without creating a bond of his own. Bane agrees to do it because he owes Samuel for a favor from a very long time ago. And that brings us right to chapter 13 in The Good Shepherd. <laughs> so now you've kind of got that just so that you're aware of who Bane is. So Bane is in his observatory searching for who this mystery mortal might be that Hope is bonding with or attempting to bond with. He looks into his flame and he's taken to Falshuk Mountain on Earth and there he makes his way through the woods to find a stone cottage with a ton of magic around it. It is very palpable to him. He is really impressed that a mortal can have this much magic and his sight takes him inside the cottage and we see the mystery mortal for the first time which basically means we have official confirmation who Hope has been trying to bond with this whole time, and that mortal is Skylar. It's a very brief interaction between Skylar and Bane, and there are no words shared between them because Bane is in hell and Sky is on Earth. And as Bane is staring at her through his flame, kind of seeing where she is, Sky turns around abruptly to look over her shoulder, and Bane is just mesmerized by her gray eyes and feels like she's staring through that invisible invisible veil and right at him like she can see him he also gets the sense that hope is not the only kind of protection over her and bane speculates can a mortal have multiple angelic bonds at the same time and then skylar's phone buzzes and the chapter ends with her making plans for that night so, question time. <laughs> First of all, could Sky actually see Bane? Yes. It's said, though, that no mortal can sense an angelic bond, but Bane was really convinced she was staring right back at him. So, do we really think that she could see him? I don't think so. She's a creature. That doesn't mean that she's immortal. I, I agree with that, and I understand that, but I still don't think she could see him. I think it was all just coincidence. I think, no, I think she could. <clears throat> yeah. That she, her magic could sense where he was. And that's why she turned around and stared the way she did. So do you think that she could see a any kind of manifestation of him? I don't know. I don't know about a manifestation, but she knows somebody was there. Okay. And the fact that... Uh, Bane assumes that Hope's providing protection for Skylar. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I thought that was laughable. <laughs> it is because we know yeah. up to this point that Hope definitely does not want to bond with Skylar because she's a good angel. Yeah. She yeah. has, and that is very clear that Hope has that ulterior motive behind it. Mm -hmm. But the second question, speaking of the bond, is... Is it possible for a mortal, not no, not necessarily focusing just on Skylar, but do you think it's possible for any mortal to have a bond with more than one angel at a time? It's possible. I mean, I'm, we don't know what the actual rules are. And like I've always said, rules are always made to be broken. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. it could be anything, but it, may, it does ask the question. If... There is a second angelic presence. Mm -hmm. Who is it? That was going to be my question. Was do you think that Sky is bonded with two angels? And if so, who's the other one? Do you think maybe it has to do? No, I don't want to spoil anything. I was going to say. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say it could be uh, one of the angels of wisdom knows of Skylar. That's like what I was saying. Kind of do you think it has hope. anything to do with the earthly guardian? Very much so. But we, a, again, that that's the ultimate question. Yeah. Who is? Because as you read, because Noel, I always thought it could have been Noel because of the fact he doesn't care this, that there's creatures mm -hmm. around and that they're 
they're propagating and you know they're killing humans but they're also living with humans and mm -hmm. stuff like that that i and the way he protects his daughters yeah i always thought that maybe he may have been the guardian and it's possible but everything up to the up to book four says he's human and that you know what happened but Cordelia that, was cursed that's that what it can was be, remember that can also be you know a bit of drama on my part leading you one way and oh doing the drama whole bomb oh, later yeah that, that you know i'm is, not i'm not saying possible. you're right but i'm saying that yeah it's, it could be but i mean that's what i've always said <laughs> so when we see skylar again because remember that was only through chapter 13 was through bane's mm -hmm. eyes when we actually see skylar through her own eyes is all the way in chapter 16. So she does acknowledge that she felt a presence in her home mere hours before we walked in, but she saw nobody. So she really just makes a joke about ghosts, which we incidentally happen to learn that they don't exist in the world of Angel of Death, and realizes the only ghost haunting her is her worry for Elias. She drafted a message to him about their future, but couldn't send it because he texted her instead to say that he saw her with Azra at the bar and thought that she needed some time to work out her feelings. She hasn't known how to respond to him since, and it's been two weeks. Damn. That what, that's the time differential between when Veiled Commandments ends and The Good Shepherd begins is two weeks. So for those two weeks, Sky has been living with the guilt of letting Ezra back into her life because look what it's done. She takes all the responsibility for allowing him to have access to her again, and she absolutely abhors herself for it. But she also tries to share the blame with Elias and Ezra, believing that if Elias would just, as Superman has said, step up and <laughs> stop saying that he can't get involved, then Skye wouldn't be tempted to succumb to Azra's whims. Oh! So do you think that Skye is being too hard on herself for Elias's distance, or should anyone else share more of the blame? Oh no, she's not being too hard on herself. She needs to be hard on herself because she made a mistake. And, oh, I hate myself because I did it. You still did it, and yeah. you're and you're not cutting it off. You're not sitting there setting up the magic, saying, "Okay, your invitation has been revoked." Yeah. So she's just using that, and then trying to uh, assign blame to other people, so she can justify her actions. Okay. I also notes that it's been exactly a year since she broke up with Ezra, and in the beginning when that they, they had their big destructive not wedding yeah does that have anything to do with her ease of allowing him back into her life almost like a subconscious apology for the way they ended things or do you think it's something else is the, is there a whole other reason why she's letting Ezra pull his old tricks again Oof. uh it could be you know they they always say time heals all wounds but when the anniversary of something rolls around, we as humans know it can be difficult sometimes. It, it it, it, okay, it depends on how bad you're hurt. Like, I, there, there are certain milestones I've come across, and honestly, I've got enough times passed that yeah. I've forgotten about it, yeah. and I just go, oh yeah. yeah, and then move on. Now, in her case, it's only been a year, so it is still fresh. It does, yeah, but her actions say otherwise. That's true. That's true. I mean, if I literally had something like that happen, there is absolutely no way in hell I would sit there even have them even within the same zip code. <laughs> what were you going to say before? Nothing. I was, I was agreeing with that. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, well, he kind of touched on the point. I was going to say... Um, usually when an anniversary of a traumatic event happens you kind of put yourself back into that 
event, even though times are different, things are different, you're in a different place. And you may not necessarily want to put yourself back. Yeah, you don't want subconsciously, to, but yeah. subconsciously you do. So and especially with it being just the one year anniversary. Yeah, like it's gonna be push. harder for you know, with him strategically choosing that time to try to encroach back in her life and actually you know, it may not be uh, it may not be a fact of oh the anniversary's coming up it just may be he's just like well she's letting me back in I might as well sit there and too. take advantage of it that's true because too. he's not using at least up to this point he's not used that as a reason to warm his way back in and yeah. apologize He's, he's just an opportunist and you know, oh the door's that cracked. I agree with for sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. break break my foot through it. Well, regardless of what it is that's convincing her that Azer deserves another chance, Sky's over it now. So she says. Anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say she convinces herself that she can't keep Elias as the other guy, which she can't. Um, and she says She's going to end things with Ezra tonight, once and for all. And she then just redirects her thoughts to other things. So she ties her hair back. Her palms start sweating while she's working. Why do you think she's getting nervous? Because those are clear signs of nerves. If she's going to break up with Ezra, what's to be nervous about? Clearly, she can handle him. She, okay, you, you nailed the uh, point right on the head. You said that she does not want Elias being the other guy. Yeah. When all of book three, Elias was the guy. Yeah. And Ezra was that thing over here. Yeah. That told you all you needed to know right there. That she literally just swapped them out. Yeah. And didn't even realize it. And that's why she's sweating because she subconsciously just realized that she just kicked Elias to the curb. She made a big boo-boo. <laughs> and and she, so, yeah, she's sitting there focusing on whatever she was working on, but her body and mind are going... Oh, you really screwed up this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Her mind off of the Elias Azer situation, Sky starts looking over those conspiracy theories that Peyton mentioned in Veiled Commandments, which we talked about last week a little bit. Just as a quick reminder, um, we're talking about the um, conspiracy theories that state that Sky was not involved in the incident much to the contradiction of her own memory. Several of the theories, and mother, and, mother, and yeah. everybody else for that matter. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, and sibling that we think that she might have killed. My theory. Several of the theories these conspirators talk about indicate that Sky just kind of manifested out of nowhere shortly before the incident happened. Sky, of course, existing, thought, what a fucking joke, until she started finding evidence for it. So as it turns out, Sky does not have a birth certificate. She's never attended any of the schools she remembers. There was absolutely no evidence that she herself destroyed the DGRC, and there is no genetic evidence whatsoever that she is related to Peyton. As Skylar compiles this evidence, she kind of starts to believe it. Yeah. And she feels like, okay, this really does make sense. But I ask you now, how is that possible? How is it possible for someone to exist with no record of ever existing? Or are these just conspiracies? I mean, people, there's people that exist that don't, that uh, don't have birth certificates and don't have any sort of paper trail to follow. So, I mean, it's not that much of a stretch to say that, you know, she may not, she exists, but she doesn't exist. Okay. You know, Cordelia, for all her faults, you know, accepts her to a certain degree. If she w was not real, um, why, w why would you be... 
accepting of something that was manifested out of magic. Okay. I mean, what to continue the the charade, the the cover for the for incident? Whatever yeah, that was. Yeah, and you know what? Kudos to her for her acting ability. She needs an Oscar, <laughs> a Golden Globe, you know, a, sta a giant statue made in Hollywood because that's a hell of an acting job. Yeah. Maybe she was created in the lab. Oh. Maybe that's why she doesn't have any of that stuff. Ooh. What an interesting theory. That is very interesting. Very interesting I theory. thought about that, too. And that's how the lab got destroyed. That is a really interesting theory. Look. Was that the incident? Her creation, maybe? Maybe she is an accident. Maybe. Maybe she was supposed to be one way and it came out a different. Maybe. We won't know until a couple books from now. So, <laughs> this is all just theory. But These I tell are all you what. Just theories. I, I tell I don't you know what. Any bring secret in, intel or nothing. Bringing him on here, he has come up with some fresh ideas. Catch up on the Angel of Death series today. The first four entries are now available directly at stevijoauthor.com.